Andrew, welcome to the very first Homes on Homes podcast. This is great because we're right at Improved Center and there's like, how many places in here? Which is great to educate people. Come on down, buy some flooring, buy some taps, buy some sinks and all the best of the best, which actually makes me excited. So people are going to be walking around saying hi to us. And uh, I understand you are a building, what do you call it? Biologist. Biologist. So is that like doctor? I, I, I'll say that, but I don't think everybody else will. I actually love that. I feel like I'm a doctor too. When you call me Dr. Holmes, I actually do have two doctorates. A a actually, a guy at Harvard um, said that designers, contractors affect your health more than your own doctor. I'm going to agree with that. One more or another, whether you're renovating your home, especially if it's an old home, you, know, you can lead in the paint, uh, asbestos in the plaster, all kinds of, I tell people, don't open things up unless you've checked it if your house is built before 1980. And the truth is, is 1985 was the real cutoff date. Anyhow, your whole goal of being a biologist is about a healthy home, correct? That's correct. So. That is pretty cool. You are building a house right now in Toronto. Is it done? No, we're just in a design stage and it's in Little Italy uh, slash Trinity Bellwoods right in downtown Toronto. Okay. And we're really excited by this will be our first home. Um, so this will be a great opportunity to test some new technologies, test some new systems and see if we really know what we're doing. So tell me a little bit about this. You're going to focus on indoor air quality number one. Number one. Products it's, number two. Yes. I'm um, right now assuming. Yes. And anything else? Yeah, for sure. We're going to be uh, doing um, purified and filtered water because uh, the water we drink affects our health mm -hmm. uh, with what we're doing. And we're doing circadian rhythm lighting, which is just a, a fancy way of saying light that changes its color and its uh, color spectrum. So as, at, as you go into the evening, it becomes warmer and warmer so that it doesn't kick in, um, stopping you from creating melatonin, which helps you go to sleep. Uh, so, let's see if I'm right here. During the day, you're going to be daylight, which yes. is a white light, which is, and we call it daylight because it matches true color outside. That's correct. And what we're used to through the day. As it gets into the afternoon, later into the evening, it starts to warm to bring down your feeling? Yes, so that your, your um, blue light stimulates cortisol and creates great activity. It's fantastic in the morning. It's what gets you going. But it harms you at night because it breaks your rhythm. And our body is, is tied to nature. We're tied to the planet. We're tied to the sun. And so if we don't turn it off, and all of us are addicts of, of some type of uh, device, if we don't bring this down uh, a notch. You're awake. You're awake and you can't get a good night's sleep. We're even going as far as creating dark rooms for sleeping so that you black out because of the lights outside. Your, your home could have a street la lamp uh, at the end of the driveway flashing in and if you don't have a blackout uh, on it, it'll disturb your sleep. You'll fall asleep but you won't fall deeply asleep. So you're actually talking a human instinct that we don't recognize because what we do know is what we know, what we do every day, having dinner, maybe a drink before bed, watching TV, the norm, I'm going to call it. But this is natural human instinct, which is much like animal instinct, because that's how animals act. It's not like they think and talk like we do, or as intelligent as human beings. Now that's interesting. With this home, what are you trying to accomplish? Like lead status? No, we're gonna we have all the respect in the world for what all the green standards are doing. We're pushing particularly, none of them go as far as we're going on the health aspect. And so we're not after points, we're after result, we're after performance um, for the home. We are developing our own standard for what we think good indoor air needs to be from a VOC level to we'll hopefully talk about radon gas and its, it's terrible effect on humans to you know the humidity level in the home, which is really incredibly important, especially now with COVID. Um, all the scientists pretty much have, have converged on 40 to 60 percent relative humidity as being the level of humidity that is not only good for our respiratory system, but COVID doesn't like it. It breaks the skin and the membrane, which is very thin, and so it'll keep you safer at that level. We were always going there, but now with COVID, we're saying you got to keep your home in that humidity level, that range. And it's funny because I don't think people pay attention to this, never mind indoor air quality, which we're going to really touch on. But humidity in itself, you know, 
uh, do you have a humidifier on your furnace? Most people are going to say yes. Do you even know what it looks like? Is the filter clean? Is it actually working? Or do you have your nosebleeds uh, throughout the winter because the furnace is running, which means the air is very dry? These are little things that I like of what you're doing because it's recognition to what we need to be healthy. We don't realize that, 40 to 60, we, should, we want that everywhere. We want it outside, it could change. Yes. We want it inside, especially being at 90% staying indoors. Uh, so that is a definite that we need yeah. to pay attention to. But one little thing, humidity, that people really just don't see, much like the air. They don't see yeah. what's floating around in the air. You've heard me say this a million times. We breathe approximately 18,000 spore counts of mold in one cubic meter of air space outside every day. And we're trying to match that inside our home. And in most cases, just because of maybe high humidity, we could have mold, more mold spores in the air yes. indoors. Yeah. Little things you've got me curious on now is what type of furnace that you, you are specking for this house. So we're right now looking at the uh, heat pump. Uh, we want to decarbonize the entire house. And uh, we're looking at heat pump technology. We're also seriously evaluating radiant floor heating. Um, and we've got a system that we're playing with and looking at whether we might actually make it a hybrid geothermal system. So we draw some of the energy from the planet that's free, um, if you can get past the capital cost. And we think we found the way of doing it that will be within our budget uh, uh, category. Um, the net result is air blowing around generally isn't good, but we need the air. We need the ventilation. And so we've, after all of our analysis, we're back to um, filtration solutions to try and get the particles out of the air, but we need the air.